Hallelujah. Can we just give God a great praise? Oh, oh, come on. Don't act like we ain't just had some worship. Oh, come on now. Do I got any David folk that said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I tell you, this is a season. This is a time where we wonder, where is God? This is a season where everything that we thought we knew was God. It has all been rocked. But it's at this time that God is requiring so much more for us. More than sometimes what we even desire of ourselves. But that is the reason why I'm so glad that you are tuning in right now. Because God is about to flip the script in your life. God is about to bless you exceedingly and abundantly. I just need you to focus in right now and recognize that you are too blessed to be stressed. I'm going to say it again. You're too blessed to be stressed. I never, I, I begin to follow. Of course, I know through our local news, we don't have a choice. It's like every day we listen about COVID-19. But I finished my series last week, I Survived COVID-19. And I began to show my daughters of how there was a, there was a, a young pilot almost near my age. He had no underlying conditions, but he had COVID, and he almost died. It took him two months to survive, but God gave me two weeks. See, I, I'm going to say that again. It took him two months, but God gave me two weeks. It's because the Bible declares, yea, though I walk through the valley. See, when you're a believer, that sickness is nothing but a valley. Oh, see, 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 I, I, see, I, see, I'm messing you up because, see, the problem is we do not walk by what we see. We walk by what we hear. That's what we call faith. And the thing I want you to understand is you must understand that you can't fear what God has already prepared and cleared out for you. He doesn't exempt you, but he promised to walk with you. And the problem is that we have been so churchmatized, we've been under so much tradition that the only thing that was, was required of us is to go to church. But now you got to take the church with you. I, I, I'm going to say it again. you got to pack Jesus up in your heart, on your mouth, in your footsteps, and take Jesus with you now. And so what Jesus is saying is that, guess what? What you used to require, I'm requiring more of you. And so what happens is we fear because we can't get to church. Because, see, we can come to church and pretend. But guess what? When the sickness comes, pretending church won't help you. Because, see, the Bible said many have a form of godliness but they deny the powers thereof. Your powers come from your faith. And if you don't have faith, you don't have power. See, many folks think that I can connect to mama's salvation and daddy's salvation. Many think I can just hang around friends that go to church, but God is requiring in this season, you got to be something. See, see you, you talk good for a long time, but God is saying in this season, I'm separating the weeks and the tares. I'm separating those who know of me and versus those who know me. Because, see, this is a know me season. I'm going to say it again. This is a season that you got to know that he'll be a bridge over troubled water. Yes. See, this is a know me season. You'll know that my God shall supply all my needs. See, see, this is a know me season that he may not come when he wants, but because he knows me. He's always coming on time. Come on. See, we had all the church rhetoric. Do you hear me? We didn't give all the church bumper stickers. Uh huh. But ain't nobody driving no more. So where you getting your word from? You better have word down on the inside of your heart. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. And see, but the problem is we come to church for amusement. We come to church for entertainment. We come to church for our flesh to be lifted while our spirits are yet dead. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, 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 yes. See, God did not save you so you can be what you want to be. 
He saved you so he can be what he's called you to be. Oh, come on, somebody. And the problem is many are going but never been called. But because you've been church you know what to say and how to act. But let me just tell you, the performance is over. And that what leads me today in this text, which is in John, the second chapter, verses 1 through 11. It says, on the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been there. Give me some water ready, first lady. Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Oh, somebody need to get this text. He says, woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, mm. each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water. Mm -hmm. Watch this. That had been turned into wine. See, many of you just skipped over and missed something right there. It said, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that has just been turned into wine. And he did not realize where it had come from, though the servants of who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Oh, my God. Can I just, can I just go ahead and pray with you real quick? Because, see, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father God, help us. No longer be empty water pots. But God, fill us to the brim. God, let us die to self. God, let us not be caught up and hooked up and tied up to the wrong things, God. But God, we ask today that you will help fill us yet again. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill us up yet again. And God, don't you stop filling us up until we get to the brim. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God for the best helpmate I ever had in my life. My wife. I thank God. December of 19, December 19th of last year, we celebrated 22 years. And I'm so glad that this year will be 23. They can't tell me that you can't be crazy at 19 and marry the love of your life. Oh, I'm, here to, I'm a living witness that I'm here to tell you, when you put Christ first, he will be the glue to see you through. Hallelujah. Somebody need to hear that. He'll be the glue to see you through. Well, here today, John, I, I, I tell you, John is just a crazy character, right? Because, see, in this text, he doesn't give us much to work with. But, 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 but as I begin to think of how we have treated God's house, Under. Watch this. Um, it was not long ago I was in my studies and I began to understand Polish proverbs. And, uh, and, and as I began to look at that, uh, 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 it, it began to speak to me. And, uh, and one of the things in the Polish proverb is, is not my circus. 
not my monkeys. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, 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 and since that time, it began to stick with me because it's a very ambiguous phrase. And, 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 uh, and, and the, 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 the volatile, oh, Lord, I messed that word up. The problematic situation at hand is that the results of someone else's action. And, and, and therefore, there is no reason for me to even lift a finger or yet get involved. I just need two or three folk who's tired of coming to church for entertainment, Try, tired of just coming, even watching online, and you just see folk performing and, and have no worship. That's why I brought in PG, PJ Coates. I keep messing that name up every time, but PG Coates. But the deal is, and, and people worship, because the simple, the simple fact is God is looking for authentic worship. God is looking for folk who will worship him in COVID and in truth. Oh, see, see, I, 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 some of y'all missed that right there. Uh-huh. Because, see, 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 COVID don't have you. The spirit does. Oh, see, you, I, I, I know. I'm coming there. But, see, the problem is, it is just what happened at the wedding. Uh, we, we, we would believe that we could put Jesus on the shelf and bring him out when it's our convenience. Uh-huh. We, we believe that we can just show Jesus like a badge. Uh, you know, when I want to get get some free stuff, uh, when I need some stuff to fall in my favor, when I, when I want folk to, to look at me different, I just show my badge of Jesus. But other than that, I fold him back up, uh-huh, and I take him anywhere I want him to go, but I don't want him to talk to me unless I want him to talk to me. Uh, you know, I don't want him to require anything of me. I just want him to speak to me when I need him to talk. But other than that, I'm not even going to talk back to Jesus, uh-huh, because see, see, that's the problem that's, that, that, that the disciples had Jesus with him, uh -huh, but they really never understood what they had with him. And, and, and see, you must look at this text real good. It talks about how they was in Canaan and how Jesus was just there at a wedding. You know, he, you know, he didn't get the invitation. His mother did. So his mother dragged him on. Mary came and dragged Jesus on. And while she dragged him to the wedding, she saw that there was a need. Uh, y'all not understanding. Y'all not getting this. See, 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 Mary was, you know, she was concerned about someone else's business. Oh, 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 my God, my God. Have you ever dealt with folk who don't know how to mind? Ooh. Uh, I, I know you don't have no one there on Facebook. You don't have no one right here in church. But do you ever run into those folk who just seem to mind everybody else's business but their own. Oh, my God. Come on, I'm going to preach this real good. And, and, and so Jesus looks at his mother and said, Mother, I, I love you and I respect you, but uh, this is not my circus. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. My God. I, 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 you just told me to come to the wet, but now you want me to show them something. Mother, it ain't my time yet. Oh, oh, but see, uh, 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 that's... That's, that's one of the things that we got to understand, but leads me to my first point. What to do when no is your only answer? Because, see, Jesus began to say, Mama, I love you dearly, but the answer is no. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting involved. I'm not doing nothing. You know how we act sometimes because COVID-19, we can't go to church no more. We can't lift up our timbers. And, yes, I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about going to church no more. Well, you don't have no prayer life no more. You ain't seeking him while he may be found. You ain't lifting his name up. You, don't, you just still need a praise team just to raise your hands. But can I just talk to two or three out there that know that you know that you to know that if it had not been for the Lord, before there was a praise team, I became my own praise team because I learned I got to praise them. Help me out, Ryan. I got to praise them even in the kitchen. I got to praise them even in the car because God has been that good to me. Oh, let me just tell you, Mary saw there was a need. But Jesus kept telling her, listen to me, I am only a guest. Uh, how many of us have come into God's house uh, and God was requiring of you something that you never knew, uh, but you start acting like a guest? Uh, oh, my God, let me preach this thing. You, 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 you know, you was ashamed to raise your hand. Uh, you was ashamed to lift your voice. But here God then brought you out of the gutter and made you. He took you from the guttermost and put you in the uttermost. Uh, but now you're there with the, with the half and the half. 
have nots, but you act like you don't got a reason to praise God. How many of you know God is not even done with you right now, but I just need two or three to just give a wave offering right now. If you know God is still not done with you, because the Bible says uh, Mary did not pay no attention to her son, uh, but she was paying attention to Jesus. Oh, somebody missed that. I'm going to say it again. She wasn't paying attention to her son, but she was paying attention to Jesus. Uh, and so she said, whatever he say do, uh, I just need you to go ahead and do it. Uh, but, but see, if you were sitting there, you were like, didn't he just say no? But see, Mary did not listen to her son. She was listening to her son. Oh, somebody got to get that. Uh, I, I'm telling you, you just, I just messed you up right there. And so the Bible says because she was listening to her son and not her son. Oh, come on, somebody. The Bible said whatever he say do, I just need you to do it. Have anybody got to a place in God that you was sold out for him, that you was willing to do whatever he say do? You just wanted to be in the number to do it. Because what the song say, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, whatever you do, don't do it without me. So we got to get to a place where it's not about us, uh, but it's all about him. It's not about what people thinking about us, but it's what he's thinking about us. Do you hear what I'm telling y'all? I just need folk to focus real quick. Too much movement going to mess the word up. Uh, but right here, it is in this text, it says, my second point, it says, you can change your conclusion. Because see, Mary faithfulness, watch this, Mary does not accept the conclusion. She know this was not the end. Huh? But see, Mary was, re was ready huh, to see a miracle. I don't know about you, huh, but maybe y'all looking for Falsy to come up with a miracle. Maybe you wait for him to give you a new mandate huh, so you can go back to what was familiar. I don't know about you, but uh, I'm not looking for going back. Because huh, wherever God has placed me now, huh, it was better than where I was before. Because see, I had COVID-19, but I learned something from COVID-19 that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth see I learned something when I went through what I went through see if you're trying to skip the process you will never get to the promise that's why I thank God I believe it was Paul he said it was good that I've been afflicted sometime God selects you to bring you through sometime God calls you into something that you didn't see huh, to give you something huh, that you would never have. That's why I thank God this joy that I have. Huh, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Do I got two or three out there that know about the joy? Huh? To see, not only does his joy huh, makes you feel good, but it makes you strong. Huh? For the Bible says that the joy of the Lord huh, is my strength. Huh? I may be but don't let me start thinking on the goodness of Jesus. I start laughing to myself because when folk counsel me out, God checked me back in. When they thought I wasn't going to amount to nothing, God stopped building me a mountain. Woo! Here we go. The third point is be determined to be committed to the solution. We always have a problem but for some reason we never have a solution to the problem we always want to tell everybody what we're going through and how we feel but have you looked at yourself and said what can I do to my own self to change my own situation what can I do to give God something to work with you ever heard somebody always want a new job but don't got a resume you ever seen somebody always talk about the cars they want but can't save no money you ever run into folk uh, always want to buy a house uh, but never getting their credit fixed oh help me Jesus oh come on somebody we got to stop warning God to do something that we ain't doing ourselves the Bible says she was convinced that Jesus could resolve the impeding disaster. So it's in this text, Jesus simply don't understand why his mama keep nagging him. 
Because see, Jesus is beginning to be very logical. He's trying to analyze everything. He said, now here I got these boys with me. I got my disciples with me. And I ain't showing them what I'm working with yet. Do you understand what I'm telling you now? He said, now these boys have followed me. But I ain't revealed to him. I haven't told them yet. I've been holding this to myself. Now, mama, you want me to come out? You want me to tell everybody who I really am? I don't know how they're going to act, mama. I don't know if they're going to be able to take it real easy that I am the Messiah. I don't know if they're going to really be able to handle that I am the bread of life. I don't know how they're going to take it. Have anybody ever been in a situation where you've been holding back because you don't know the folk around you, how they're going to act or who God is making you to be? I just need two or three that know God is making you to be something better than where you are right now. But you got to begin to let go and let God. For the Bible says that he looked around and he said, I just got to be obedient. And the Bible says, he said, go get me some water pots. I want you to get them and I want you to fill them to the water. I, anybody in here ever had to be a water pot? I don't know about you, but I grew up in Southeast D.C. I grew up with an empty life. I grew up with food stamps. I grew up with a single mother who had to teach me how to play football. I grew up, well, I'm here to tell you, with nothing but concrete around me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The only grass that I see uh -huh, is when I went to school. Uh, but other than that, where I lived, uh, it was nothing but concrete all around us. Do you hear what I'm telling you? I grew up where my mama and my aunties, uh, they stayed in one apartment. Uh, for half of their life, do you understand? But here God's telling me, I'm going to do a new thing in your son. That this is not your end, huh? but this is yet going to be your beginning. That son, I'm going to give you houses. Huh? I'm going to give you cars. Huh? But it was hard when I was catching the A2 bus. It was hard when I had to walk up to the hill of Martin Luther King Avenue. Do you hear me? I had to fight my way through. Do you hear what I'm telling you? It was hard to see. But anybody know that God is a faithful God? Anybody know that God is a reward? Order. If you just stick with God and do whatever God tells you to do, if he say love your neighbor as yourself, if he say go to the least uh, and I'll make you the most, uh, if he says stop worrying about being a tail, but no, I'm about to change you and make you the head, do anybody believe uh, what God is really saying today? It leads me to this. He says, mama, it's not time for them to see the miracle. It's not time for them to know who I am. But the Bible says, because Mary was a faithful steward, when Mary knew how to humble herself, when Mary knew how to begin to pray to God. Because see, this is the same Mary that was carrying Jesus. And when she got over to Martha, the spirit leaped in her. So one thing that Mary had, watch this, she had the Holy Spirit in her. And she birthed it out, do you hear me? But she still had residue left. Oh my God. Anybody glad for residue? So therefore Mary knew because spirit can speak to spirit. Oh, somebody missing that. And so guess what? She begin to look at Jesus uh, but talk to her son and she began to hear I know that my God uh, can supply all my needs uh, according to his riches and glory so only thing you got to do is be obedient somebody this morning uh, out there with lack uh, somebody out there don't know how you're gonna pay your rent somebody out there is stuck in depression somebody out there is stuck in fear and you don't know how you're gonna get out this thing I just need you to hear my words whatever Jesus says they do. I need you to do it. If God say get up this morning, wash your face and when you step out the door, depression gonna leave. I need you to wash your face. I need you to step out the door so depression can leave. Whatever God tell you, somebody say just do it. But the problem is what has messed the church up for so long? It's not my circus. It's not my responsibility. 
I shouldn't be doing what you want me to do. Why the pastor always calling me to do something? It's because spirit speaks to spirit. And God is telling me that it's in your belly, that the best is yet to come. That in your belly, you're going to change the nation. It is in your belly. You're going to speak life over dead situations. It is in your belly. The problem is you just been coming to church, but now God is saying it's time for you to be the church. Do you hear what I'm telling you? This is the season that Jesus has to be your reason. Now, I didn't mess my sermon up. I didn't do it all. So now, I'm going to tell you what he does. This is what God wants to do in your life. He wants to close the book and get your new one. Because the rules you've been living by, it don't work. The folk that you've been keeping around just so you can feel safe, it ain't going to work. What God needs you now is to use what's inside of you. But pastor, how do I know what's inside of me. Let me help you. You know when you wanted to do bad and something inside of you told you it wasn't worth doing? Ah, that's his word that he put inside you. You know the place that you should have went when everybody else got shot up? But he changed your direction. That was because that was he placed inside you. You know the car accident that really should have took you out, but you didn't have a scratch? Oh, that's because the word, it will keep you. And I just need two or three to hear me right now. I'm talking to you from the word. I'm not looking at a script. I am the script. And that is, God loves you this morning with an everlasting love. But you got to love yourself, ordinary to receive his love. Because love speaks to love. I don't care how your upbringing was. Let's get excuses out the way. Yeah, you're talking to someone. Yes, I've been damaged. I've been molested. I've been through it all. But greater is he. That is in me. Because see, instead of feeding the pain, I had to feed my spirit the word. And the more the word got in me, the more I was able to come the molestation. The more I was able to come the shame. I was 400 pounds of pain. But God said, if you trust me, I'll lead you. But before I could trust God, guess what I had to do? I had to forgive myself over things that I had no control of. But we think because of the pain, it gives us the remote, but you can't control it. So what I had to do, I had to let it go. And letting go ain't easy as they tell you. Oh no. Because I can't tell you. Because as you're letting go one thing, somebody stab you with another thing. And you told God, I thought this side was going to be easier than that side. But God said, I never told you it would be easy. But the thing you're not understanding is you see them stabbing you, but I'm feeling it for you. What you went through could have been worse than what it was. Because he stood up for you don't mean the residue ain't there but what God is saying today go get the water pots go get the paces in your life that pain has lived for a very long time go get them I know they're heavy because the Bible said one water pot was over 30 gallons of water that's a lot of weight 
But the problem is we come to church and we cur our water pot. We go to work and we just want a paycheck, but we keep curing our water pots. We go back home and no mama and daddy don't treat you like they treat everybody else. It's because your water pot. Oh my God. And the worst thing about a water pot, don't let it have a crack in it. I just need two or three who've been coming to church with a cracked water pot. Well, you know, they make me feel good through praise and worship where it looks like my pot is going to get full today. But the moment I get to the parking lot, I'm back empty all over again. The moment I get back home, the very word that I just heard, it don't have no weight to it no more. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The songs of worship that I just heard and just sung, it don't have no weight to it no more. But this is what Jesus says. Bring me the water pots. Somebody you watching, and I don't know if it's been abuse. Uh, I don't know if it's been alcohol. Uh, I don't know whether it's been drugs. I don't care what your water pot was. Jesus says, bring it to me. I don't know about you as hard. Uh, but what they gonna say if I if I begin to show my water pot? I've been I've been wrapping it up like a Christmas present. I've been smiling when I'm hurting on the inside. I'm dying every single day. Every morning when I get up, I find no purpose to live. It's because there's a leak in the water pot. So guess what? Go get it. God said. Stop waiting for other folk to change your new year. When you got the power down on inside of you to change your year right now. Stop waiting for someone to do something for you when it's time for you to do something for yourself. I know you're stuck in the house, but you're not really stuck in the house. It's time to get in the real house. Stop worrying about how they treat you at home and worry about how God is treating you in heaven. Come on, somebody. Because he said, whatever I do up here, I do down there. And guess what? If you're communing with God up there, he'll start talking with you down here. Come on, somebody. But the problem is you don't feel worthy because you've been carrying that weight for so long. But Jesus does this. Bring me that first lady. No. Oh, yeah, bring it all to me. Come on. Oh, this first lady. Oh, God. God got jokes, y'all. Ah, stay, stay. Stay. Every Sunday, this is what we do. Uh-uh, stay right there. I need first lady in that, in, that, in that shot. Every Sunday, this is what we do. Move the camera back. Some of you have to. This is what happens. Watch this. We... We, we, we praising Jesus. We caught up. We got the church shirts on. And, and, uh, and we saying Jesus is my help. And then what happens is he, he treats us just like the man that was laying at the pool. He just wants somebody to help him get in. But God said you didn't need no help to get in what you were in. So why do you need some help now to get out what you will put yourself in? But what he says is, because my grace is sufficient. This is what grace does for you. Even when we don't deserve to be filled again. He not only sat here and wait for you, but mercy comes out of grace. And it comes over. And guess what it does? Even though the enemy tell you that what you're not, mm -hmm. mercy say, I forgive you. It lets you take another step. And even when you think about the sins that you have committed, mercy says he forgave you. You can take another step. Because I want you to understand, you got to stop staying in place and stop making a move. Because this is your hour, this is your moment, and this is your time. And God said, as far as the east is to the west, 
I'm forgiving my daughter. I'm forgiving my sons. But you got a warrant. Is there anybody want water? Because see, one of the reasons why Jesus didn't want to do the miracle, they just wanted to be happy. They just wanted to be satisfied. But that's why when the man, when the guest, when the, when the maid of honor, when they looked, they saw water. Huh? But by the time their lips, <laughs> by the time they started drinking, they tasted wine. Some of y'all missed that. It's because they didn't have faith. But it took Mary's faith. And then Mary ignited Jesus. And Jesus began to do the miracle. Only thing you've got to do is ignite your faith today. Because God said, I'm taking the lid off. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. I'm ready to fill you up. Do anybody out there want to get filled again? You don't have to come to church to get the Holy Ghost, but you can get the Holy Ghost at your kitchen. You can get the Holy Ghost in your bedroom. You can get the Holy Ghost in your car. Anybody ready for the Holy Ghost? For the Bible says, watch this, when two or three just come together, watch this. He said, I'll pour and watch what God does. Oh, my God. Because, see, this is our vessels right here. But this is the pot that we keep curing, which is our pain. But God says, watch this. He pours this in so that can keep going out. You see what I'm telling you? All your bitterness, it goes in, but then it comes out. And watch this. Now, after God blesses you. You become the cup. You went from a crack pot to a whole cup. Now watch this. Because this is what messes us up. When God delivers us, when God sets us free, guess what we start doing? Uh, 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 give me a cup. Is there a cup back there somewhere? I just need a cup. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, that worked, Dave. Give me the bowl. Give, oh, you got a cup. Bring me the cup. Come on, come on. Quick, 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 quick. So, I'm glad you got that. So, now God and took your pain. You started minding other folk business. So now you're current other folk stuff that don't have nothing to do with you. And then the worst thing to do, watch this, I'm almost done. You start taking the very spirit and water that God used to fill your cup. You start going back in trying to fill somebody else's cup. But I need to warn you, this is for you, Sister Anita. The worst thing you can do is feed anybody out your cup. Because when you empty out your cup, there's nothing left for you. I just need somebody to recognize. You never feed anybody out your cup. But guess what you do? You feed them out your saucer. Because what I want you to understand, hold this right here, First Lady. As God keeps blessing you, do you hear me? I want you to see this. As he keep pouring more him in you, guess what happens? Every now and then some splashes come out of there and it gets down to your salsa. But guess what happens? He's still keeping your cup full. And that's why you don't feed people out of your cup. You let folk get some of what's falling in your salsa. Because the Bible says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I just need two or three out there who want God to fill your cup. And guess what? Starting today, I'm not giving nobody what's in my cup, but they can welcome her. They can have anything that falls on the salsa. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you think in God that you got cup faith and salsa blessings, just say yeah. If you're so glad that God has delivered you, say yeah. And if God is bringing you out, say yeah. And he's delivering you right now. Say yeah.
Thank you, First Lady. You said that over there. My brothers and sisters, God wants you to know I don't care what your condition, it's not your conclusion. I don't care what you don't have. You just don't have it now. But it does not mean that it's not promised to you later. You just got to hold to what God has promised you in the dark hour. When the light was on, you got to take what he spoke in the light and carry it over in the dark. And even though it's still dark, you got to hold on to what God promised you until he hit the switch. If he don't hit the switch, you keep holding on. But when he hit the switch, that's when you can let go. God need to bless you real good. And I, I want to pray for you. So one of the things I want, I want you to begin to list all those right now. Those who you know just need prayer. Because God want to bless them right where they are. And I'm going to ask PG if he would come and, and just sing behind me a good worship song. Because somebody need prayer right now. And one of those songs I always love is My Soul Loves Jesus. Anybody remember those songs? See, I, see, it's the blood songs. I'm old school, y'all. It's the blood songs. And, and, and PG, you may not even know it, but if you know it, come on. And First Lady, oh, I got to get, uh, there you go, Sister Chastity, help her. Take that cushion off that mic. And, and what I want is that somebody needs to come back to God. It don't, I know you don't have the aisle that you walk down and all that formality. Uh uh. You can change your life today. But one of the things you got to understand is you got to know who you belong to now. I need you to just repeat after me. Don't even bring that up on the slide, uh, Sister Keisha, but I want you to hear this right now is that, Lord, I'm a sinner. And God, this thing I keep hearing about you, God is. It's not easy to easy convert over because I can see this, but I can't see you like I want to see you. And I can hear them, but I can't hear you like I, I, I want to hear you. So it's hard for me to trust and because and, and, I see this, but I don't see you. But you want me to hear you. But how can I hear when I hear all this side, all this noise? How do I make the exchange that that's you? This is for you. Because the only thing you got to do is open your heart. How do I open it? You got to go to that place where truth live. We didn't pretend it long enough. We didn't pretend it what everybody wanted us to be. But now you got to be what God has called you to be. And it goes like this, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need you to save me from myself. God, I'm struggling in some areas that I don't even want to confess. Because I know I get shamed on. God, I know folk will say, no, I didn't know that was you, but God, you know. So God, I don't want this thing to be over me. I want you to be over me. So God, I need you to forgive me so I can forgive myself. So God, I'm a sinner, but I need your grace and I need your mercy to come and save me. God, don't just save me here, but save me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. And God, as you're saving me, I feel so dirty. Can you wash me? For I heard at church that you were creating in us a clean heart. And you are renewing us a right spirit. God, I don't want to do wrong no more. Wrong has gotten so easy and gotten boring. But now I want to be challenged. I want your struggle and not my struggle. I want your yoke and not mine because you said your yoke is easy. But your burdens are light. God, I'm getting choked up over here. But I know if I give it over to you, you will curb for me and deliver me at the same time. So God, I repent. I repent from settling. I, from, I repent for just being afraid to challenge myself. God, I repent for just pretending that I'm something that I'm not. But God, I know you see me as who I am. And God, a little bit along the way, I think I lost a little bit of me. But God, if you can bring me back all over again, 
and mend me. Mend me to your will and not to mine. God, I'll be forever grateful. So watch me now. And I could be whiter than snow. Lord, help me and deliver me in the name of Jesus. Sing that right there. Right there. Come on. Oh, yeah.